Welcome to r slash entitled people. This is very similar to r slash entitled parents, but nonetheless, it is a new subreddit for me. So if you enjoyed this subreddit and you want to hear more stories, let me know by hitting that like button. My first husband was a Marine. On base, there's a commissary. It's just a huge grocery store and only military and their families can shop there. Prices are lower than the store in town and you don't pay tax. Every service member gets paid the same day. I learned to wait a couple of days before I went shopping, but there were some days when we were out of everything and I had to go on payday. The lines got ridiculously long, curving around the entire store. One day, some woman started pushing her way to the front of the line, loudly bragging that her husband was a master sergeant and outranked all of ours so she deserved to go first. Then a woman at the back came up and started telling her off. This was almost 10 years ago, so I don't remember the exact dialogue, but she was basically reaming her for wearing her husband's rank, saying that her husband earned that rank, not her, and she wasn't entitled to anything. Furthermore, grocery store lines had nothing to do with rank, and even if her husband was here, she'd still have to wait. Woman 1 came back with, I don't know who you think you are, but my husband can destroy your husband's life. Don't mess with me. Woman 2 says, Oh, you mean a master sergeant outranks the base general? I'll have to let my husband know that he has a new boss. What's your husband's name? Woman 1 kind of went pale and just walked to the back of the line. See, military members are responsible for the behavior of their families, and her husband could have faced disciplinary action. She knew this, but didn't expect anyone to question a master sergeant's wife. Cracked me up. A lot of wives get a hard-on for flaunting their husband's ranks, thinking it made them better than everyone else. Watching her get put in her place made my day. Remember when you were like 8 years old and you were like, My dad could beat up your dad on the playground? I kinda thought kids outgrew that kind of behavior, but apparently with entitled people, it just lasts forever? Our next reddit post is from what the f Kanye. I work at a hotel and our pool was shut down cause a kid decided to take a dump in it right before the inspectors came to check us out. The poop messed up the filtration system really bad, so the inspector from the state environment department shut down our pool and placed a sign on the pool door that said, pool closed by order of the New Mexico environment department. This lady comes up to the pool and asks if I can let her into the pool so her kid could swim. I told her I can't because it's a safety hazard. She loses her cool with me, saying that her kid really wanted to swim. And she picked us because we had a nice pool and hot tub. She also threatens to call corporate. Mind you, her kid was the one that dumped in the pool. OP, if the kid takes a dump in the swimming pool, I think what you should have done is tell the mom that her kid can just take a dip in the toilet. Our next Reddit post is from Anima Vivir. My coworker is delusional AF. I took a shift that she usually works and she asked me how will I send her the money I made since it's her shift? Update, she was freaking serious. Called my supervisor on me and said I'm withholding her funds and that I told her I'll beat her butt. I was low key just playing but LMAO, I'm a beat her butt. LMAO, wow. So come to find out she did the same thing to two of my other coworkers and they actually gave her the money? Everybody's an idiot. She had the right one when she asked me to give her the money I worked for. My supervisor said so. Everybody dumb dumb except me. My supervisor said, we never would have known if you didn't tell her you'll beat her butt for asking dumb questions. Thank you OP. LMAO, I don't even know what to think. The thing I can't figure out is, is this person an idiot for trying to get the money from someone else's hard work or a genius because it actually worked? Thank you so much for getting my car towed. You are such an effing butthole. Could your lazy butt not find another spot for one night? My boyfriend who does not live here parked here without knowing. You could have put a note on the car. Now I am out $300 and a car. F you. 
If I towed somebody's car in my spot and they left this note for me, I would literally frame this note and hang it on my wall. Our next Reddit post is from Bus Driver Jim. This happened to me a few years ago. I had recently moved to the north of Scotland where I now live and was staying with my mom and stepdad while getting a house sorted. They went away on holiday for a fortnight, so missed all the fun. I came home from work one afternoon, started at 4 a.m. and finished at 1.30 p.m. to find a car blocking the driveway into my house. Having a small car, I parked at the top of the drive blocking them in. My parents live out in the sticks on a single track road so I couldn't leave my car where it was because it would have been blocking the road. After an hour, I saw someone approaching the drive and taking pictures of my car. I went out and confronted them and the conversation went like this. Why are you taking pictures of my car? The entitled person says, Because you parked illegally and you're blocking my car in. I'm going to call the police if you don't move your car from my neighbor's drive. This is clearly my parents' drive. Did you not think it was odd having to walk through someone's garden to get to their neighbor's driveway? Well, it wasn't very clear so you can move so I can get out. So I get my keys and move, then park my car and think nothing of it. Next morning, I leave for work and once again, I find this same car parked in my parents' drive. This time, I go knock on my neighbor's door and ask him to get his friend to shift it. Only for my neighbor to ask, what friend? I pointed to the car and told him what had happened yesterday. Turns out, the Pratt wasn't his friend at all, but liked to walk around the woodland path near our houses. 20 minutes later, he finally appears, smirks, and moves before saying, I'll be parked here tomorrow, too. So, once again, I go to work at stupid o'clock, and when I get back, lo and behold, the Pratt has parked there again. This time, I decided to teach him a lesson. I had two days off, so I went to the shops to get some shopping done and a rather large amount of alcohol. Strongbow and Savannah Dry Cider, if you're interested. Got home, parked as close to his car as I could, making sure I was safely off the road. I went inside, made some dinner, and started drinking. About an hour later, there's a banging on the door. Yes? Move your car, it's blocking me in and my family wants to go home. I look out and there's his rather embarrassed looking family sitting in their car. Sorry, can't, as I took another drink from my cider. Been drinking for a couple hours, probably over the limit, so I don't want to risk it. What? Why are you drinking when you knew I'd be wanting to move my car? I'm off for the next two days, so I fancy to drink. I'm calling the effing police. You do that. Before shutting the door and popping into the lounge to watch TV while also watching them through the window. About two hours later, apparently the police had trouble finding my house, lol. The police arrive and speak to entitled person before they knock on my door. Yes, officers, how can I help? Why are you stopping entitled person from leaving? So I began explaining the events of the previous days and mentioned how I told him he couldn't park here. I also explained that I had been drinking and was probably over the limit, so I couldn't risk moving my car. The police officer agreed that I was correct to not drive while intoxicated. They then asked what insurance I had. I pointed out that my insurance was named driver only. Basically means that only people whose name is on the insurance can drive my car. So they couldn't move it for me. Come on, just make him move his car. The police officer says, just going to get the breathalyzer. Blow into this please, to me. You're about two times the legal limit, so I'm sorry, but you can't move your car. Sorry, but he's over the limit. You'll have to leave your car here and come back tomorrow. What? But how are we meant to get home? There's a bus stop about two miles down the road. You'll get the bus to Blank City at this time or Blank Town at this time. But the bus doesn't go anywhere near where we live. We can call you a taxi if you want, but you'll need to pay for it. He did this deliberately. Yup, lol. Fast forward to the next day. The police arrived with him in their car, and before they asked me to move my car, they decided to have some fun. We just want to check you with the breathalyzer again. Big, deep breath. Entitled person looking more and more worried. You're fine. Can you move your car, please? Of course, officers. 
The police officer says to Entitled Person, don't park your car here again. Entitled Person couldn't even look at me, just got in his car and drove off. Later that day, I decided to build a gate for my parents. God, stories like this bewilder me. What would have stopped OP from just like slashing the tires or just breaking off the rearview window, keying the car? Why do these morons park their car where it doesn't belong and then act like they're invincible? It's like, dude, I know where your car is. While you're away, I can do whatever I want to it and no one will be able to prove anything. Review, one star. My husband and I have shopped here consistently for years, but we will use a different location from now on. They will literally lock the doors right in your face if you show up two minutes after closing. <laughs> when, I, when I was a teenager, I worked at Subway. And when we closed, there would inevitably be someone who comes in like one or two minutes right after we close and stands there at the glass door looking pitifully inside, knocking, asking if they can come in. Nothing gave me a greater joy than just waving and then ignoring them. Sorry, dude, I'm going home. I couldn't care less about your problems. Our next Reddit post is from Get Me Outta. Has anyone else felt like an inconvenience to the staff at Blank Library? For reasons beyond my control, we finally made it to the library five minutes before closing. The staff seemed irritated and frustrated despite the fact I'd rushed it with a toddler in tow and visibly pregnant. I told them I only needed a few minutes to grab a few books for my kids, and one staff member stood by, looking at his watch and mumbling that he wanted to go home. We were out of there at 6.03 p.m. Has anyone else experienced this? Unfortunately, this isn't the first time I've experienced this and witnessed others being herded out impatiently by the staff. Ah yes, because there's nothing workers want more than to stand around not getting paid just because pregnant, entitled people can't show up on time. Smashed my ex-boyfriend's computer. That'll teach him to talk to other girls. She's my cousin. We were talking about Thanksgiving. You cheated on me last month anyway. Whatever, you deserved it anyway. You never buy me anything. F you, smiley face. You're going to pay for my computer. I'm on the phone with my lawyer right now. Whatever, I'll tell him you raped me. Psycho grunt, just stay out of my life. Just called the cops, see you in court. Stop commenting now, smiley face. Lol, you go girl. Lol. <laughs> Your Honor, proof that my client did not rape this woman is this Facebook post which I would like to present as Exhibit A. Would you like to sell your baby? I've recently had a miscarriage and I've been following you on Facebook. She's so beautiful. I've already given her a nickname and bought things for her. Um, this belongs in r slash I'm calling the freaking police. Maybe even r slash honey, what's the number for the FBI? Background, an airline captain commuting to work purchased a full fare first class ticket to get there. Lived in Atlanta at the time, domiciled in Houston and commuted. Normally, you could get a jump seat in the cockpit, but on this auspicious day, that was already taken. Pass riding wasn't an option because there were no seats in coach and only one in first. Pass riders can be bumped for fare paying passengers. And I needed to get to work so I plunked down my credit card and bought the last seat in first. Boarding has occurred and I am peacefully in my seat, waiting for pushback. Then an entitled woman says, You are sitting in my seat. You'll need to move right now. I check my boarding pass. Nope, this is my seat. Not gonna happen. Sorry. You're an employee. You're sitting in my seat. Move now. May I see your boarding pass? Clearly there's been some mistake. You may not see my boarding pass. I show that when I boarded. I've upgraded to first class. Now move. You'll need to resolve this with the flight crew. I'm a passenger. The entitled woman stomps off, resembling an irritated Dolores Umbridge, and returns with the flight attendant. 
The flight attendant says, Good morning, Captain. May I see your boarding pass? Sure thing, and I show my boarding pass. Ma'am, that's his seat. He paid for it. Well, then throw him off, dear. I've upgraded to first class, and that is now my seat. I'll need to see your boarding pass, ma'am. You will not. I showed it when I boarded. I've upgraded to first class. How did you upgrade to first class? I upgraded to first class. I'm more important than an employee. Now get him out of my seat. Someone has called the cockpit, and the captain has left the flight deck to deal with this. Ma'am, I'm Captain Wallaby. Not his real name. I've just spoken with the gate agent. We certainly apologize for this awkward situation. The agent has corrected your paperwork and has a voucher for future travel for you as well. Please go fetch your new boarding pass and your voucher and we'll be on our way. The entitled woman departs up the jetway, a triumphant smile on her face. The captain turns to the flight attendant and says, prepare the doors for departure. The doors close. The captain returns to the cockpit and as we push back from the gate, I can see entitled woman pounding on the glass next to the jetway. It was a nice ride to Houston. The coffee was wonderful. I don't get it. She just thought that she could just declare that she upgraded magically and wouldn't let anyone see her ticket and everyone on the plane would just agree with her? In what universe does that make sense? Dear neighbor, you just moved into this neighborhood a year ago and I wanted to give you time to correct this problem on your own, but you are apparently too inconsiderate to do so. Every day this week, when the weather has been nice and windows are open, you proceed to let your small child run free in your backyard and laugh and giggle and carry on without end. This is very disruptive for my two dogs and my bird who sits next to the window and likes to look into your yard. Perhaps you could ask him to tone it down a bit or at least limit his outside time to 15 to 20 minutes a day, so my dogs can be outside without seeing him running around. If this kind of behavior persists, I will call the police. If I were OP, my next step would be to contact every single friend I had who had a toddler for an impromptu backyard party for my little kid. I'm at the hospital for my mom and there's a lady complaining about throwing up and having strep. Nurse comes back and tells her she's pregnant and the girl's mom literally said, no, you're wrong, she's a virgin. <laughs> I would love to hear that daughter's explanation for how she's pregnant and still a virgin. Yeah, mom, I don't know what they're talking about. To be honest, I'm still a virgin. I think what happened was I slipped and landed on a baby and it just kind of popped up inside of me. So now I'm accidentally pregnant. That was r slash entitled people. And just a reminder, if you like this subreddit, please let me know by hitting that like button. Or if you don't like this video, let me know by hitting the dislike button.